Hi, welcome to our Max360 at AI Group webinar, What is a Safety Management System? I'm Jenny Thomas, Senior Advisor for Safety and Workers' Compensation with the Australian Industry Group, and joining me is Trinette Jeske, the Southern Region Manager from the AI Group Safety Team. Hello Jenny, it's good to be here. The total economic cost to Australia of work-related injuries and illnesses is estimated to be $60.6 billion a year. That's more than a billion dollars a week. And consider the millions of dollars being lost straight off the bottom line of business through injury, equipment, breakdown or misunderstandings in the workplace. However, for many of you, simply pausing to consider the potential loss of one day's production will justify your decision to develop an effective safety management system in your workplace. So we're both really glad that you've chosen to view this webinar today as understanding and ultimately developing and implementing a safety management system can put you on the path to creating not only a safer business, but also importantly in today's economic climate, a more productive one. Today, we're introducing the concept of a safety management system, a concept model, followed by a more detailed documentation model. At the end of the webinar, we'll also point you in the direction of some great tools and information to help you along the way. So let's look at our safety management system concept model. As you can see from this slide, a safety management system is made up of four separate elements. Without any one of these, the system will break down. The four quadrants of the model are people development, implementation and change management, data management, and at the top of the circle, SMS documentation or safety management system documentation, which relates to the processes. An effective safety management system is much more than just the documents. We all know it has to be part of your culture, but the documentation is the starting point and that's why it's at the top of our model. The documentation can't stand on its own. We need people to understand and implement the processes. So the next section of our model is people development. We can't have a truly effective system without developing the people who'll bring it to life. Training is a key component of people development, but we also need mentoring, coaching, and performance management. Consultation must also be included because without engaging your people from the early stages, it's unlikely that you'll fulfill your business objectives with a safety system that is aligned to those business objectives. Moving around the circle, we come to implementation and change management. This is about doing it. You have to implement the system and almost without exception, we find this takes change management. And finally, data management. You need somewhere for all your acquired knowledge to go. So you can monitor and review your system as well as audit and improve it and to make sure that everyone has the correct and current information. Data management cannot be underestimated and it completes our circle and returns us to the documentation. I find that many workplaces I visit believe a safety management system can live in a folder on a shelf. We both know that it's much more dynamic than this and I know Trinette, you spend a considerable amount of your time assisting people to understand this. Can you share some of your experiences when you're working with organisations to develop systems? What would be the key components of a documented safety management system and what does it look like on paper? Jenny, a documented safety system will look very different for every organisation. As you mentioned with the concept model, safety documentation is just one part. However, there are certain components or building blocks that remain the same for every system. What we are looking at here is a contextual diagram of a standard safety system. First, all systems must have management commitment. This is displayed at the top of the diagram. In order to develop any system, there must be genuine commitment from the leaders of the organisation that workplace safety is essential. The safety policy will highlight the organisation's vision towards providing a healthy and safe work environment. When planning for safety, the organisation must set agreed standards for all workers and other persons to follow. These standards will support the company's commitment to safety by providing an overview of how the organisation undertakes certain activities, such as training and consulting with workers, or how it actually manages risk. Jenny, have you ever had the experience of people knowing that their organisation is committed to safety, but they still don't know how to be safe? 
Yes, I have. In fact, I often speak to people who are adamant that their organisation's committed to safety because they have a safety policy in the foyer. However, employees still don't know how to report an incident, even if they're injured, and there's even greater lack of knowledge around reporting a near miss. That's very common. In fact, there are many businesses that are committed to safety. However, they haven't provided clear, visible systems for their workers. So this next section is an example of where the procedures and guidelines can effectively outline exactly what needs to happen under certain circumstances, who is responsible for undertaking an activity, and what tools are required to be completed within certain timeframes. You will see that almost every component of the documented system will have procedures. However, the extent of the documentation is dependent upon what workers are required to do, what are the guidelines and what are the tools. The documentation will be very business specific and will change over time as policies and procedures are updated. Jenny, how have you been able to see the benefits of well-documented processes in an organisation? I find that the vast majority of people want to do the right thing about safety. However, they do need guidance and clear processes in place so that they can do this. In fact, when investigating a workplace injury recently, I had a supervisor tell me that because he knew the procedures, he was able to get an injured worker help quickly and do everything he was required to do, such as incident reporting and preserving the incident site in what he said was a very traumatic and emotional time. So not only do clear procedures benefit workers, but this also helps by giving supervisors the time to supervise and managers time to fulfil their duties. As a manager, you don't want to be spending your time telling workers how to do their jobs. You want to use your time more effectively by managing their performance and improving your operational performance, including safety. Here, we're talking about improved productivity. Not only are we streamlining our processes so everyone can do the job they've been employed to do, but we're limiting any confusion and time-wasting activities within the business because the expectations have been placed in black and white in the safety system. When we have clear, documented processes, we have what I like to describe as useful paper. Who hasn't heard people say in their business, you know, they, I've got a business to run. I don't want that safety stuff adding more time and effort to what's really required of me already and my workers. This is why we develop systems and get everyone's commitment. Procedures need to be developed in line with operational processes so that safety can be part of what we do every day without even thinking about it. So as a manager, what does this mean to me and the business I work in? It's important to remember a safety management system is more than the folder sitting on a shelf telling us what we would like to aspire to in relation to safety. A system includes both a documented approach and the people who live it. So in order to get a sustainable system that works efficiently and effectively, we need to get our people involved in the process through consulting with them and training and encouraging them to follow the procedures. Absolutely. A safety management system should be dynamic and forever improving. And we cover this topic in more detail in our webinar titled Reviewing and Improving Your Safety Performance. So before you join us for this webinar, I recommend that you download some of the graphics you've seen today, share them at meetings, talk about them with your colleagues, and set aside some time in your diary and check out the Max360 at AI Group website. It has great information and tools to assist you see where you currently are with your system and also get some recommendations about how you may progress. You can find out all about our webinars, get updates, access info sheets, and learn about upcoming events. If you need any assistance, please contact our Safety and Workers Compensation team on the info line number 1300 886 150. Until we see you next time, that's goodbye from me, and make sure you make time to watch our Reviewing and Improving Your Safety Performance webinar. So I'll say see you later, and thanks for joining us, and bye for now. An advisor will be live online to answer your questions. Check the Max360 at AR Group website for dates and times. For more productivity ideas to help your business, explore the Max360 at AR Group website or call the Productivity Info line on 1300 886 150.